Absolutely. Let's get back on track now as the Dunlop Super 2 Series get ready to race. Jess, thank you. Uh, Greg Murphy's making his way back to the commentary box at the moment. We are scheduled for 16 laps. It's the first of four races for the weekend. Round three of the Dunlop Super 2 Series. It's a, a great new thing that we have for this class. But we go racing on a Friday now in some cases. Just brilliant. Here's some of the stars of the future in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. Those three that you just saw will make their appearance in the main game as part of a wild card opportunity uh, a little later in the season. Great stuff. Josh Keane, big crash for him before the car went off at nearly 200 kilometres an hour on the approach to turn two. And young Will Brown there, just 18 years of age, comes from Toowoomba in Queensland, a winner of the Formula 4 Championship, a winner of the Toyota 86 Series, which you saw just a few moments ago. And he has been electric in this series, was fastest, in fact, in the first practice session this morning. Here's Gary Jacobson, reigning champion, car number one he won this round here last year on the way towards the title this guy in the midpoint of the season was unstoppable in 2016 jack lebrock he switched from pro drive to nissan for the 2017 season and he nabbed the armor all pole check this morning here's the virgin australia departures board for this round round three of the championship takes us to the legendary Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Built back in the 1950s, really reinvigorated in the 1980s when it formed a part of the World Motorcycle Championship. Two or four wheels. This is an awesome place to race. Turn four, Honda Corner through six, Siberia. They don't really get much of a chance to take in the wonderful ocean view. Nine, where Craig Lowndes went off today. All that repair work still going on at Team Vortex. And then if you're brave enough, you hold it through. Turn 12, accelerate up to 285 k's an hour on the Gardner Strait and as we welcome Greg Murphy back to the booth what's the weather like outside there and is it going to be okay for this one do you think well it's it's in that uh, sort of really painful situation where it's it is raining slightly it's not heavy and the skies are quite clear but uh, I see the the track has been has been declared wet so we will take on some information from the circuit shortly from Rihanna just to see who's doing what with tyres as we go on board for the highlights of the qualifying session. This guy won't be too happy with, with his performance overall. Todd Hazelwood uh, languishing a little bit further back than we expected he would be. Kukasteki getting sideways. This was uh, the moment that got our, our hearts racing a little bit as Josh King got wide and went into a part of the racetrack that I haven't seen a car, I don't think, ever before. He uh, got very wide through turn one, carrying a lot of speed, ended up doing a bit of damage, but he got that car back to the pit and they got it out again, which was remarkable. So the damage there, not as bad as what it looked. This was a moment of Adam Marjoram spent the whole length of the straight on the grass. Plenty of cars hitting the grass. Nice and damp here. That was Jack Perkins. This moment, that caught us. Davies on the outside of Jack Smith, who was unaware. Perkins having another moment and uh, his session meant that he was only going to be able to be 11th but LeBrock he pulled it all out a super effort in qualifying very very smooth he was to grab an armor all pole position the first one for him in 2017. We might give our little production team uh, a job overnight I'd love to see a comparison of the onboard lap of LeBrock versus Jacobson because the way the two of them have been pedaling these cars around the island is vastly different super smooth for LeBrock and of course uh, Jacobson is working hard but there's another young guy in the second row of the grid Rihanna who's been making waves and he is uh, in a very good uh, starting position for this one Anton Di Pasquale once again really difficult conditions for you guys in the two for super two series but uh, once a great qualifying result for yourself yeah it was a it was a pretty good session obviously very difficult um, no dry running before qualifying, and now we've got a 50-50 track, so they're keeping us on our toes, which is pretty exciting. Good luck, mate. Cheers, cheers. Part of the Paul Morris Motorsport operation. Scott Jennings and Paul are here. They missed, uh, Paul missed the last round of the championship. He was at Long Beach in the United States, but he's mentoring Di Pasquale, and they've been here in Melbourne, in fact, uh, uh, in the last sort of 24, 48 hours and then come down to the, the track overnight. This is going to be challenging and uh, I'm not overly envious. I'm not uh, 
out there at the moment there, Rusty, because these conditions <laughs> on slick tyres around this very fast racetrack uh, will mean that they will need to Three use every single bit dancing. of their skill to keep it on the road. We can see the moisture on the windscreens. We can see it on the lens of the camera, and we can see it on the track. That has uh, got a bit of a dullness to it because of the moisture that is sitting on the asphalt as they go away on their warm-up lap. We will take a look at how they line up. As we said, Jack LeBrock beside his teammate from last year, Gary Jacobson. And as you said, Rusty, two very different ways to qualify in that session not long ago. And on Di Pasquale next to Shea Davies in the second of the Ultimas in the championship. Dumbrell back on row three. He's finding it obviously a bit more of a challenge than probably what he's used to. As I mentioned before, Jack Perkins lines up outside the top ten. Josh Keane, who had that off that would have we would have thought was going to ruin his weekend but they managed to get that car back to the paddock and uh, the pro drive boys went to work and managed to get him back out on the track before the end of the session three different classes or divisions of supercars racing here at the island this weekend if you're a fan of your supercars this is v8 heaven we have the third tier v8 touring cars we have the main game the virgin australia supercars championship this is the very second tier of the sport. Here's the champion, Gary Jacobson. He'll make his debut in the Endurance Series later in the year alongside Jason Bright, the Pro Drive at Sandown, Bathurst and the Gold Coast. Amazing job by Pro Drive with that car. That was a wild ride through the Sand Trap at two earlier today for Keane. Gassing it up, Bryce Forward, the youngster from Darwin. Here's the pole sitter, Jack LeBrock. Nissan Altima getting its breakthrough win in this class at the last round of the series in Tasmania. This guy's had two race victories so far this year, Todd Hazelwood, and he's shown that he's more than prepared to go wheel to wheel with experienced campaigners. The likes of Paul Dumbrell, who he will line up right beside on row three of the grid. As they go about their business, trying to get as much temp into the Dunlop slick tire. You can see the wipers running on a couple of cars there intermittently. And just looking out the window, the com box, it's, it's actually quite light in, the, in parts of the sky and the direction where some of this weather is coming from. So I'm not sure how much more moisture we're going to see falling onto the track. Looked like Shea Davies locked up then. And oh, I'm ooh, sure he did. Almost hit Di Pasquale. I'm sure he did. They're, they're looking at the moment, just trying to search and see what kind of grip level there is at the back of the Vodafone safety car, I think it is, sitting there at the end of the lap. They're waiting to line up behind this field of cars. All 22 of them this weekend. A recap for you of the point standings coming in. Dumbrell on top with 571. Just 10 clear of Todd Hazelwood. Jack LeBrock is third in the standings, as you can see there. Only 45 shy at the top. Then quite a gap back to young Will Brown, rookie. Making his debut in the series at uh, the Clipsal 500. And he's really made an impression, this young guy. So go get a team, the Matthew White Motorsport crew. Final instructions to Jack LeBrock. This will be a great battle with Gary Jacobson. They were teammates last year. They're in rival operations this season. For a time in the midpoint of the 2016 championship, we thought that the momentum would swing in favour of LeBrock. He was unbelievable in WA. He dominated in Townsville. But at the end of the season, after the sand down round, Gary Jacobson regained control of the championship and would go on to win the 2016 title. But the defence has been very difficult for him so far. Seventh in the points race and with a lot of work to do. Green flag, green flag. Shea Davies, is he out of the box there? We'll confirm He's that. Very close, isn't he? If he if he's not set to go racing first one of the weekend what a way to rock friday at phillip island nice start oh. by lebrock tough one for jacobson and shay davies has bolted off the line but was he in the right place for the start bit of a question mark the nissens one and two lead them down into turn one bit of a touch between lebrock and davies hazelwood on the outside look at it he's looking searching for a bit of dry row you can see how much water there was on the curb there rusty as he Slotted back in behind Di Pasquale. What a start by Shea Davies. Jacobson was just a little bit slow to get away. And he's lost that position to the Ultima. So the Ultima's one and two for Matt White Racing. As they shuffle through the field, 
trying to find some uh, room to move as Davies goes wide. Jacobson's late on the brakes, does it nicely, very nicely. Put the Falcon down the inside as really put the money on his braking ability there to get it done. And, and uh, well, that's a great move. Davies will be very angry with himself that he let that happen. So Jacobson, a bit more confident in these conditions. But the guy oh. on forward, he's had a spin, I think. So he's underway again. That was down at uh, Siberia, tight turn six. It's a story move, sorry, because Dumbrell is down in seventh spot. So he looks like potentially losing another spot. Kostecki argues, but doesn't win the battle at MG Corner. So Hazelwood sits in fifth. De Pasquale's played a nice, just a nice smart play here. He's settled into fourth, out of trouble. Jacobson got the eyes on. He's chasing LeBrock now. Oh, oh yeah, it's quite De Pasquale. Wow. And I think uh, one of the window rubbers may have come out when it was sideways with all that aero. I think someone else is in the grass a little bit further back. Is that one of the Kostecki boys, I think? Yeah, it was. I think it was Jake Kostecki also visiting the slippery stuff. So they streamed, and here, there's the other brother. So that's Kurt. Who's going to venture back onto the track, hopefully. Oh, oh round, round goes his cousin. Brody, who's been off there already this Friday. A couple of times he's found oh, the sides of a racetrack. Left, left rear's gone, isn't it? Yeah. So. so he's had that touch as they were side by side there. Musket. Oh, sorry, that's uh, Mason Barbera a little bit further back with the wiper on. He's made up a few spots, I think. Andrew Jones, who's languishing back there, had a shocking qualifying performance. One he won't be happy with. But at the moment, LeBrock, he's pulling out that gap. Davies is putting some pressure on the guy that just removed him from second spot. Gary Jacobson. The Ultima is working good here this weekend. Again, the consistency of these cars in the hands of these two drivers for Matt White. He'll be very happy with uh, the way they're conducting themselves at the moment. And I uh, can tell you someone else will be happy will be Todd Kelly and that Nismo team who will be very proud to see their cars doing such a nice job in the double Super 2. Recovery here from Shay Davies. He's retained that sponsor that he had late last year with Erebus Motorsport. The gap is now 1.4, so Jacobson's been able to find three tenths on LeBrock that time by. Anton Di Pasquale through turn one. It looked a little bit ragged, 67. So he holds on to four, the head of Todd Hazelwood. Just looking at the times, 136.5. Last time pass for LeBrock. So they qualified. And uh, down at the 31s, weren't they? So, you know, at the moment, those conditions, you can tell, just hindering the performance a little bit. Looks pretty dry at this part of the circuit. Jack Perkins coming down there now into brakes in the Dragon Motorsport entry. Macaulay Jones behind him and then Will Brown making up the top 10. This is the start. It seem that uh, Jacobson got away too bad, but then the revs just dropped in the Pro Drive Falcon. He had to have another dip on the clutch, and by that stage, Davies had launched. But he was on the outside, and it was a bit, I think the, the track had a little bit more moisture on it just on the outside. He had to slot him behind that little touch, as you mentioned, Rusty. And then Hazelwood was working on the outside line, but you see how much water there was. These guys are on slick tyres, remember. So, job well done. And this is on board with Bryce Forward. He got a pretty good start. There's Josh Keane not getting away cleanly, so his poor Friday performance continues here at Phillip Island. And then forward sort of uh, wasn't quite sure, just wanted to stay out of trouble as well, which is a good way to treat it. And you can see the wheel work going on there. Wow. Young man from Darwin. He's still scheduled to get into an Altima. Oh, he's going around the outside. Isn't he? So there's a bit of a high line go kart line with the damp conditions, and he managed to get that place by the looks of it. You can't see. Can't see if Andrew Jones is on the inside. He might be. Oh, no, he's not. So, great move around the outside of Southern Luke. Difficult place to do a pass, but in these conditions, you've got to go searching. He's just too deep under brakes a bit. Now, does he get a touch? So, he's down the inside. It's Will Brown to the left. 
It's an awesome drive on the first half of this lap. But there's Will Brown. Oh, he got a little touch, I think. But there was just the smallest of touches, I think. Oh, look at this for on second. On the left corner for... It. And this is the replay of the Kostecki. Uh, I think it's Jake in this respect. Or was it Kurt? I can't remember which one it is, but uh, they look the same, these Kurt. cars. And it's Kurt. So his brother had been off the road earlier. And then his cousin Brody goes off. So it's a Kostecki trifecta. In this respect, and he managed to get going, but you're right about that tyre. So this is the start from Gary Jacobson. I'm just waiting for the lights. It wasn't a terrible start. Shea Davies' one was just brilliant. So the RPM didn't drop as much as I thought it did. Oh. <laughs> Is he working hard? So nice bit of driving. The battle here for eighth place. Jack Perkins, Will Brown. And just behind, lined up, is Macaulay Jones. And that brand new chassis, Rusty, that you uh, outlined earlier today, BJR being so busy, absolutely not an hour left in that team, really, or a minute left in that team of, of work. They have just been out of control rebuilding so many cars, and that one is a brand new car that needed special dispensation. As McCauley goes down the inside of Jack, gives him a bit of a touch, actually, moves him inside. Perkins struggling a bit. Very, very, very... Sorry, I'm just watching that now. And then we've got an investigation between that's car forward, 16, forward 38, and, and, and turn Brown, 6. That's so. right. So that's just flashed up on the screen. And after a solid first half of the lap for forward, he was facing the wrong direction. And I think he might have got that little touch. So I'll have to look into that one later. Find some more camera angles. On board with Josh Keane. And as he comes down into MG, you can see how tentative. Very tentative. So there's still a bit of moisture on that road. On these slick tyres, everyone's having to be subtle on the steering, subtle on the steer on the throttle as well. 660 odd horsepower being generated, and they light up those slick tyres on a surface like this. Very easy, runs very wide on the slippery curbs at the exit of the last turn, making a little roll bar adjustment to the car, trying to change the balance, get a bit more performance. Fastest lap of the race belongs to Gary Jacobson with a 33.424, but he trails Jack LeBrock here by 1.7 seconds. Now, you can see that there's not much in it between Jacobson and Shea Davies, who sits in uh, in third place. They're, in fact, just 0.7 in that battle for second spot. Rihanna? Adam Mudrum, you and I keep meeting like this, and unfortunately, it's not in the best circumstances. What's happened to you? I don't know. I've become bad like Barry or something. It's it's horrible. I was, I was out there. We made a few spots off the start. We're, we're going pretty well. And the car was actually feeling really good and had good pace to the guys ahead. And, um, you know, starting to settle into rhythm. And unfortunately, Brody, my teammate, came around the outside and he, uh, he's obviously clicked to the rear right. And, you know, straight away, the car felt a bit squirmy, but didn't really think too much of it. And then looks like we probably had a rear right delamination and something else is broken in the suspension. So I'm, I'm just gutted. I, I seriously am. I don't know what we did this year, but either way, it's it's just not what we want. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a shame for the Matt Stone Racing and Auto One boys, but just going to have to keep our chins up and try and hope that this bad luck goes away. Lots of more, lots more racing to come this weekend for the rest of the year. So chin up and we hope that it all turns around. Thanks, Rihanna. Turn it around. His teammate Todd Hazelwood sits in fifth place at the moment. Another story that we're chasing, Andrew Jones, yeah. down in 21st position. That's a surprise. I'm sure if uh, there's a, another problem there with that car, but uh, he's been uh, falling back through the field pretty quick. One driver that has been moving through the field after facing the wrong direction on lap one is Bryce Ford. He's now up to 13th. Rusty, that thing is flying at the moment. So making progress back towards the front is Renee Gracie. She's uh, in 19th. Moved to the Dragon Motorsport stable this year and working alongside uh, Jack Perkins. She's really pleased to get her hands on one of the newer generation cars as well. LeBrock's advantage up in front is now out to 1.8 seconds over Gary Jacobson. He's our race leader. 
just watch here. This is what Murph was talking about in qualifying earlier today. The inputs on the steering wheel, so smooth. A little bit of a lock-up light there. See, Rusty, just that uh, red light that came up on the dash there, or the shift lights, just indicated at that last second of brake pressure, just as he was releasing the brake to turn in. Had a little moment where that inside front wheel just locked up slightly. So as he comes onto the front straight, very gentle on the throttle, making a small roll bar adjustment there as well. Changing the balance, and he changes it back, <laughs> and he moves the other one. So maybe moved it the wrong way from where he wanted to uh, be taking it. He's got that information on the dash as well, so that every time he moves that roll bar, it changes the digital display, it gives him a reading on, on the position. But again, very smooth off the turns. We had confirmation overnight that he'll do the Hidden Valley and Queensland Raceway rounds with a wildcard entry. Matthew White, very experienced racer in his own right with the glasses on there to the right of your screen. And now Team Boss. Now the gap's come down too, so Gary Jacobson pushing very hard. And uh, there was a bit of a, it was half a second difference in that first sector on this lap that Jacobson has caught Jack LeBrock. That's a lot of time in one sector to find. So that gap down to 1.2 seconds. And Jacobson has just set the fastest first sector of this race so far. And moving forward even further to oh, Bryce forward. So he's just taken Jack Perkins, who is, I would say, incredibly unhappy at the moment, at the moment sitting in that car, not able to do what he wants with it. And uh, he's a long way back now from the lead of this race. And his fastest lap time, nowhere near as competitive as what he would want it to be. The weird part in that is he got as high as eighth at one point, and the car looked pretty handy, but it's it's drifted back hasn't it there's an issue there because i'm just looking his fastest lap rusty is a 137 it says on our timing screen and he's not giving a fight at all to bryce forward in this respect so there's something going on there i would say here's a replay the midis falcon look at the gathering up the the distance there Easy. closing him down so clearly in my mind jack has uh got an issue with that car he's lost another spot now he's dropped behind matt charter who's up to an excellent 13th place yeah. so perkins with some trouble in that dragon motorsport car we go back to the another of the brad jones racing entries smith who is on double duty this weekend in both the v8 touring car series and of course in super two here and chasing the 56 of jake kostecki and he is chasing him hard he's looking down the inside at uh kostecki still too far ahead now smith we heard oh! Charter, so close. We have seen so many cars off the inside of turn two, leaving the outside of turn one and then ending up on the inside of turn two and crossing the track like that so far today. But I was getting back to Smith. He actually got a penalty for that situation in qualifying where he weaved in front of Shay Davies, who nearly went off the road because of it. So he got a four grid spot penalty for that, for impeding another car in qualifying. So. Hopefully, young Jack will learn from that one, and the team should be aware of uh, making sure that he knows about other traffic as well. So just made a pass then on Kostecki, moves himself uh, forward into 15th position. His charter replay. Look at oh, Barbera, Barbera. <laughs> oh, I think Barbera saw him. He knew he was there and did exactly everything he needed to to avoid it. From inside with Jacobson. He just takes his hands off the wheel, pulls the belt sound a bit tighter. And he's reduced that gap, Rusty. Man, it's under a second now. So LeBron looks to be having a few dramas. We've got Charter. He's in that spot that we've seen a number of cars off the back side of turn two on the other side of the gravel trap. This set a red flag earlier for Simona Di Silvestre when she ended up there. And we've seen other cars in there so far this morning. So is this going to see a safety car? Jack Perkins has come to the lane in between time. We're hearing that Andrew Jones not reporting any major dramas with that car, but he's back in 19th as we see a position here. This is Paul Dumbrell, the man who had a great start to the season at the Clipsal 500, taking the 44 of Richard Musket. That is for sixth place. So as this race goes on, the Burson Auto Parts Commodore safety starting to show. Flags, safety car boards Ooh, and flags, now this could work in the favour of a number cars, of people. Uh, stand by. Michael Massey, race director, saying stand by. Vodafone safety car. Being sent on its way. Let's pick up the field. So is this going to help or hinder Jack LeBrock? With seven laps remaining.
It's going to take a little bit of time to get uh, that car of Matt Charter out from behind turn two. Is LeBrock in a bit of trouble or is he just measuring where he needs to be at this uh, stage of this race with only a handful of laps remaining? View inside race control there. Michael Massey to the right. Craig Bear to the left. Um, the incident is off track. Should give a bit of a shout out to Murph to the team at Eagleston Motorsport. Remember Nathan Morecambe had that incident in practice this morning and we're really behind the eight ball with the repair on it for qualifying but he's out there at the moment up into 14th place so oh he's got his, uh, his glasses off too Jacobson so is he having he's fogging up or something he's, yeah it looks like it he's taking his glasses off these we've got very used to wearing so he's, I think he they may have fogged up he's trying to get some air on them by the looks of it making a roll bar change at the same time multi-talented so he started the race with his visor down with his glasses on and he's had to take them off at the moment have to put them somewhere surely fastest lap of the race and he reduced the gap down to 0.6 now they all bunch up under safety car this is going to be a ripper run to the flag the first of four races for the dunlop series here at phillip island jacobson needs the points doesn't he lebrock was in overall terms just 45 shy of the series lead coming into this race so Rescue queues have been, uh, crews have been uh, very busy this morning and this afternoon here at Phillip Island. They're doing a great job to extract Mac Charter, his car from the back of turn two. And a bit of a replay here of, of Gary behind the wheel. And uh, is he going to. Is he putting them back on or taking them off he's there? He's put them back on, but is he going to take them back off again? I'm not sure. But he's got a little. If he hasn't already got enough to uh, manage in the Pro Drive Falcon. Bryce Forward, had it not been for that that contact early on, I know it's well, under investigation. Probably worked for him, hasn't it? Yeah, he's and up it, into 12th. He's got some great speed going on in the old generation car, which isn't the one that he started the season with. He was involved in that uh, situation, that incident. They took a, four cars out at Tasmania just two weeks ago. He was a bit of an innocent bystander in that car. Quite badly damaged the team haven't had time to assess exactly what uh, they're going to do with it so he's he's in a spare car that matt white had there okay, so being that he's running a couple of ultimas the field car 28 to hold 80. so the safety car the vodafone safety car is pulling away from the field so we're going to get some more laps here of racing which we're looking forward to because it is all on these shea davies right behind jacobson he's letting him know he hasn't given up yet, and Deepa Squally sitting in fourth with Hazelwood right behind him. So, Jacobson lining himself up. Looks like that car's got some good speed in it, maybe to finish this race. A couple of people have messaged us via socials to say they're struggling to focus on their work on this Friday afternoon. That's OK. <laughs> we want you to enjoy this. The Dunlop Super 2 Series, first race of the weekend. Tremendous way to start. Huge weekend of supercars action here. LeBrock unleashes the Nissan Altima and leads them on to the Gardner straight here. But Jacobson is right in the draft, right in the toe. Nice restart by both of them. Oh, little bit of a space. A Gap back restart. to Davies. Great restart by Gary Jacobson. He's timed this one really well. Sits on the outside of the Altima. LeBrock had to go defensive. He's in the right spot here, but the Falcon is looking racy he puts his nose up the inside oh. he's a big moment as he tried to change direction it forced lebrock to go wide early track the ultima away from its ultimate line and he had a big moment through the center of that corner as he tried to just edge the nose underneath the ultima further back look at dumbrell hustling hassling hazelwood as they come into honda corner davies looks closer this time to gary jacobson and Di Pasquale not putting a foot wrong on that restart. Nice work by Anton Di Pasquale. There's Brown under investigation at the moment for that incident a little earlier with Bryce Forward. 0.5 of a second. LeBrock's done well. Well, this is another test, isn't it, for Jack LeBrock? Just to see how he handles this. He talked about being patient, a bit more patient. That's a bit of the problem that came into his championship chase last year making a few mistakes unnecessary. So far, 2017, 
he's shown great patience to take out that first win in race four in Tasmania a couple of weeks ago at the moment. He leads them here at Phillip Island, race one of four. Hazelwood, the guy that has added another win to his tally two weeks ago as well. He'll be hoping to add some decent points to his championship this weekend. Look at Brown here on musket into turn one, Dewan corner. Brown just two spots behind his well credentialed teammate Paul Dunbrow. He's going to look to have a bit of a crisscross here. He's all over the back of Musket. Trying to put pressure. And he's doing a very good job. McCauley John. <laughs> Jones. I'll oh, get that out. McCauley Jones looking pretty racy too in that brand new car after a horrid start to the season. Josh Keane completing the top 10 as we watch that group. Very good job, despite the pressure from Jacobson. Those tyres had cooled a little, but LeBrock did really well. 0.6 of a second between LeBrock and Jacobson. We go back to Di Pasquale, who's fighting with Hazelwood. Hazelwood in fifth, Di Pasquale in fourth. And this will please Paul Morris. He's been a bit of a mentor, guiding Anton Di Pasquale. The car he's competing in is an ex-Pro Drive Falcon. It went back to Pro Drive headquarters. You can see the rain there on the windscreen. We believe in some parts of the track it's getting a little heavier. Yeah. Just when we thought the tests were done, there's a few more to come yet for these guys. So they've got good temperature in the tyres, though, and it's, depending on how heavy this comes, they'll, they'll be able to withstand it reasonably well for some time, unless it really starts to come down hard. Brown, he's got past Musket. As the wiper comes on for Will Brown, who's moved into seventh place. And in right that behind his teammate. Forward. Musket comes back down into the turn one, the very, very fast turn one, over 210 Ks in good conditions. They still look like that. Got plenty of pace as Brown has a bit of a moment as he turns into the southern loop. Judging, judging what they've got. Jacobson all over the back of LeBrock. The Falcon working good in these conditions. And LeBrock's the pioneer, isn't he? So he's out in front there. Point two. And they're dancing. They Just... are. They're moving. The cars are all over the place. They're not sort of being able to put them exactly where they want at the moment. And must get back on Brown down the inside. That's Siberia. He takes that spot back. Brown is looking to go around the outside. He does. Oh, the Musket. Then the inside. So Musket gives him room. Wow, that's an amazing exchange. The young man from Toowoomba, 18 years old, willing to put the car in places many other drivers wouldn't. His first season in the category, and the guys around him have got a little bit more experience. Well done to Bryce Fullwood in that older generation Falcon. He's on the back of that group in 12th. We turn our focus back to the front. Here we go. Look at the looking at, in the draft. Gary Jacobson goes on the wider side, hoping to get up the inside through Dewan Corner. Awesome stuff as they battle for the lead. The Falcon versus the Altima. Last lap. Can LeBrock hang on, or is this going to be the champ's day? Jacobson has the faster car. He's putting it wherever he wants at the moment. He's got a bit of an overlap. This is absolutely critical. LeBrock's not going to be able to stay on the outside. And Jacobson oh. takes the lead and will go defensive. They touched, yes, they they touched through Stoner Corner. Amazing. That is brave. Jacobson gets it. Kostecki goes off. Oh, forwards off. He was behind Kostecki. So those two have come together, defensive again for Jacobson. He's done the hard work. And Shay Davies is zeroing in while these guys battle. What has LeBrock got with a handful of corners? We head toward Lukey Heights now. There's a couple of key corners, but the way the Falcon has been performing in the hands of Jacobson, I don't think there's anything LeBrock can do about this. This has been a champion drive, hasn't it? He said that he wanted to do it at Phillip Island. Oh, was good in the V8 touring cars here last year. Won the round in Super 2. Tough start to the championship, but is this the moment where the 2016 champion takes his first race win of the year? What a season we have on our hands in Dunlop Super 2. Gary Jacobson will get his first race win of the season. Oh, well done, baby. Well done.
<laughs> Great stuff. Jack LeBrock second, Shay Davies home in third. Altimus one and three. And got to give a shout out to Anton Di Pasquale as well. That's the fourth he needed. He's shown the speed, but hasn't been able to convert so far. That's impressive. It is impressive, and they were all together. Look at those gaps. The top five cars within two seconds. This. Oh, there's the move. So, Kostecki. They came together. So, he's made a mistake, Kostecki. And then it looks like Fullwood tried to take advantage and just was carrying a little bit too much speed. They've come together. Kostecki's made the fence. So, Bryce Fullwood having another full on race. But back to the guy that carries number one on his car. That was nice, Gary. Yes, it was. <laughs> You're a big social media fan. That'll get a run, won't it? Hashtag. So Jacobson takes the win, his first of season 2017. LeBrock on the podium once again in the Nissan Altima. And there are two of them in the top three because Shea Davies gets that top three result. That's just race one of the weekend, though. We have three more to come in the Dunlop Super 2 Series. Well done, Nathan Morecambe, who, after all that drama going off at MG Corner this morning and clouting the wall, the Eggleston Motorsport team rebuilding that car and he worked his way almost into the top 10. Highlights of race one of the weekend for Dunlop Super 2. It was a nice start by Jack LeBrock and his teammate Shay Davies launched off the second row of the grid. Gary Jacobson had to recover. Wasn't too bad a start, but just not as good compared to the Altimus. Bit of work to do for Paul Dumbrell. He ultimately ended up sixth. Wild ride for Anton Di Pasquale. He wasn't the only one to do that. Jake Kostecki did the same thing coming on to the Gardner straight. We had some sprinkles of rain as the race unfolded. People on the slick rubber and as one Kostecki rejoined, his cousin left the circuit. Brody Kostecki going round in the Matstone Racing Falcon and it damaged that, uh, that left rear tyre. Jack Perkins was in the wars. For some reason, he's ended up 27th it's oh, sorry, 22nd, I should say, in the order, but spent a lot of time, almost 15 minutes, in pit lane with some sort of issue with the Dragon Motorsport Commodore. Almost clean bold was Mason Barbera as Charter went off the exit of turn one and heading for turn two. The restart, all the pressure. LeBrock was able to maintain it. But as the rain began to fall a little heavier, Jacobson just seemed to have the confidence and he was able to get ahead wrestle the race win from Jack LeBrock. His first victory of season 2017. Nice start, or well, nice job by the champion. So that sets the scene for the weekend. He's absolutely rapt about it, as you can, uh, as you would have heard on the radio there. In championship terms, Dumbrell 622 from Hazelwood on 616, and Jacobson has moved up two spots on the ladder as a result of that race victory. There's team boss Tim Edwards looking to the sky, looking to the weather. He got it done. Got a cap for me? Can I borrow your cap? <laughs> Get in there, Rihanna. Yeah. Congratulations, Gary Jacobson. He just wants to steal the cap. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Fridays have been owned by the Super 2 Series, and you guys put on a show for us. Congratulations. Yeah, I just got to fix my hat. Sorry about the delay in the answer, but yeah, I guess, um, like, we started with a really good car last round on the Friday, and obviously we had a good result, but uh, it just wasn't to be. And another front row star, you know, qualifying went just as good in this car. It, uh, with the new livery, it's just as quick, isn't it? So, yeah, the, the Mega Fuel race car was just amazing to drive then. Jack LeBrock was pretty quick on the cold tyres. I think his pressures might have been a bit higher than me, and he was challenging me at the start, but then slowly just pegged him back lap by lap and then sprinkles of rain on the windscreen and we we're trying to guess like how far are you going to break i don't know <laughs> it was just a game changer so I th yeah I, I guess it was just a great race and great to be on top and great to give back to all my like my family my sponsors and my team absolutely stoked if anything watch the replay just to hear murph say nice gary so well done <laughs> hashtag nice gary that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, it got a run, and you get the feeling that the former teammates, Jacobson v LeBrock, that is a rivalry. We will talk about more as the Super 2 season unfolds. We need a break here. Uh, we're gearing up for practice two in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, live here from the island. The 